All right, in this video, I'm going to show you a very important technique called completing the square. I'm going to start off with the case in which the coefficient of x squared is 1, and then we'll generalize. All right, so let's just break right into an example. We're going to complete the square in x here in this quadratic expression. Okay, once again, note that the coefficient of x squared is 1, and that's what we're going to focus on in the beginning. The first thing that I like to do is I like to rewrite it and put the constant off to the side. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take half of this number, square it, and then add it right here. So 1 half of 6 is 3. So this becomes 3 squared and 3 squared is 9. So we take half of this number, square it, and add it. But you're going to see that these are not equal. I have an equal sign in between, but x squared plus 6x plus 4 does not equal x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 4. So we have to compensate for the adding of the plus 9 by next subtracting that same exact number. Okay, so just to recap what we did was we started off, we put the plus 4 on the side. We took half of this number, squared it, added that result, then subtracted that result. Okay, next we're going to focus on this trinomial right here. The result of adding the square of half of this number to it produced what's called a perfect square trinomial. And the reason it's called a perfect square trinomial is that if we factor x squared plus 6x plus 9, we get x plus 3 quantity squared. That is called a perfect square. Therefore, this is called a perfect square trinomial. So to rewrite, to continue to rewrite this or clean it up, again, we start by factoring that trinomial to start off with. We get x plus 3 quantity squared. Then we have plus 4 minus 9. These two terms combine to give us minus 5. So x squared plus 6x plus 4 is equal to x plus 3 quantity squared minus 5. All right, I'm going to give you an example to try. Okay, press pause while you work on this example. So you're going to start off by putting the, the constant term off to the side. Next, you're going to find half of this coefficient of x, and you're going to square it. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So we're going to take this answer 16. We're going to add it right there. And now we're going to subtract it over here. Now we're going to factor this perfect square trinomial. And there's a shortcut to doing that. So we're going to always end up with the x here, and parentheses, squared. What follows the x inside the parentheses is always the number that you're squaring here. So it's always half of this number here. Half of negative 8 is negative 4, so it's going to be x minus 4. And then we combine these two, plus 6 minus 16 is minus 10. So x squared minus 8x plus 6 is x minus 4 quantity squared minus 10. Okay, this is kind of a tricky technique, so I'm going to guide you through one more example. But first, I'd like you to take a stab at it. Okay, so complete the square in x here. Okay, so we put the minus 2 off to the side. We're going to take half of negative 4 and square it. Okay, half of negative 4 is negative 2. 
So we have negative 2 squared, and negative 2 squared is positive 4. So we're going to take this number here, add it there, subtract it after the minus 2. Next, we'll factor this perfect square trinomial. So we get x, take this number right here, minus 2, squared, and then minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6. So minus 6. x squared minus 4x minus 2 is equal to x minus 2 quantity squared minus 6. So you see that once you get the hang of it, it's actually not such a tough technique. All right, the last example I'm going to show you is what to do if this number in front of x squared, again called the leading coefficient, is not 1. All right, let's complete the square in x here. As before, I'm going to take the constant term and put it off to the side. Next, I'm going to go to these first two terms, again, leaving this off to the side for right now, and factor out the coefficient of x squared. Okay, so if I factor a 2 out of 2x squared plus 8x, I'm left with 2 on the outside, and I factor 2 out of 2x squared, I'm left with x squared. I factor 2 out of plus 8x, I'm left with a plus 4x. And I'm going to leave a big space here, which you'll see why in a bit. Finish off the parentheses, and there's the minus 7. Okay, so all this piece here is just this, factoring out the 2. Then what I'm going to do is focus on this inside of the parentheses and apply exactly what we did in the earlier examples. So now I'm going to complete the square inside the parentheses. So I'm going to ignore that 2, and I'm going to ignore that minus 7. So I'm going to complete the square in x squared plus 4x. So what do we do? We take half of this number and square it. Half of 4 is 2, so this is going to be 2 squared. And 2 squared is 4. So we're going to take this number 4 here. We add it. And then we're immediately going to subtract it. Because again, same as before, we can't just add a number and leave it. It completely changes the value of the expression. If we're going to add it, we must subtract it. Again, I'm going to tell you it's very important in this, when, we, when we're dealing with a uh, leading coefficient other than 1, it's very important that the adding and subtracting happen inside the parentheses. All right, now inside the parentheses, I'm going to worry about these three terms and factor them. Okay, so I took half of this number, squared it, and added it, and again, that created the perfect square trinomial. So we have the two on the outside, these parentheses. So th this here, this red parenthesis here, matches up with this one. Then I'm going to factor this, so that gives me another parenthesis. So I have x, take the number that I squared, plus 2, so plus 2 squared. This piece here, x plus 2 quantity squared, matches up with this piece there. So now I still have the minus 4 inside the overall parentheses, so minus 4. Then we have the minus 7. All right, the next step is to take this 2 and put it, distribute it inside these outer parentheses. So we end up with 2 times x plus 2 quantity squared, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, so we have minus 8, then we have our minus 7, Finally, we end up with 2 times x plus 2 quantity squared minus 8 minus 7, which is minus 15. Okay, so our answer is 2 times x plus 2 quantity squared minus 15.